Hey guys, we need to have a chat. So you may be noticing some new equipment showing up in my shop, and you may also notice that it's largely from Tormach. That is because I am officially a Tormach brand ambassador, and I wanted to make this video to explain to you guys exactly what that means and the repercussions it might have for the channel. Now, I want to make this clear getting started off. I am a machine shop first. I make my living making parts, not making YouTube videos. To put this in context for you guys, this month as a job shop, so far it's the 22nd of October, I have received $8,503 for job shop work. And in terms of YouTube, I have received $603. Now that actually covers both this month and last month because last month uh, I totaled $8,465 as a job shop but made zero on YouTube. The month before that, August, I made $249 on YouTube. So like, yes, it provides some money, but it's not a major source of revenue for me. I had one video that did really well, which is why this month was $600. But most of the time, it's in the $100 range, which don't get me wrong, I greatly appreciate that as a small business that's quickly growing, like $100 is still a reasonable amount of money and I would still love another $100. But like, it's not how I'm making my living. I have done some video production work for a fusion distributor called NextGen. I did get that business because of my YouTube channel. However, none of that stuff went onto my channel. They didn't sponsor a video or anything like that, so I am not counting that. But they have paid me a total of $4,500, $2,500 for a uh, Fusion training course that I did for them, and then $2,000 for an IMTS demo part and a video to go along with that. I have also received two different freebies from different companies. I have these uh, torque adapters from Martin Precision Tools, and I have received a mist coolant unit that went with my old Tormach, and this set of tap adapters for a socket wrench, which I actually love, by the way, from Stupid Simple Tools. In both cases, they just gave me a free tool with no expectation of any particular content in a video, and at no point did they pay me. Other than we're about to talk with Tormach, that is the extent of my YouTube influencer business dealings, at least that I can remember. Maybe a long time ago, I did something for in, on Instagram, but uh, that is basically the extent of the stuff that I have received for free from YouTube or been paid for YouTube. Now, going forwards, the situation with Tormach is going to be a little bit different. They are still not paying me anything. I'm not receiving any financial compensation from them directly. However, they are giving me some equipment and presumably some discounts on other things going forwards. So let's start by talking about the saw, speaking of discounts. The saw I actually received before signing a contract with them. I did pay for it, but they gave me a heck of a deal, and I don't think a non-YouTuber would have gotten the same deal. And it was a used prototype unit, so I don't think someone else would have gotten that if I had not had that relationship with Torma. And then, of course, the big news is that I have a mill on the way from them. I have the 1500MX mill with a fair selection of accessories and like work holding and tool holding on its way to me right now. I believe it is on a truck at this instant. And to be clear, everything up until now, everything that I have published, I have never had a deal with Tormach. I've, of course, been friendly with them. I've been on good terms. I really like them as a company but we haven't had any sort of deal until right now. So let's go over the contract. So in my hands here, I have a tablet. And on that tablet is my actual contract with Tormach. And I'm gonna go through some of the details on it with you. Now, I'm not gonna show you the actual text uh, as Tormach asked me to keep that private, um, which some of you may find funny for reasons that only you guys will understand. But so it starts off by saying, hey, this is an agreement between AJ and Tormach. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, the overview is listed as Tormach wishes to enter a long-term partnership with Alexander Huff. And basically it's designed for uh, them to help support me in my content creation and me to help support them in, I mean, machine sales, if we're being honest. They describe everything that they are providing to me. And it does say this equipment is provided for free and I will be able to keep it. I have complete creative freedom within that as long as I feature the 1500MX and demonstrate its capabilities. 
they give me a list of uh, suggested video topics that they would like done, uh, which I will go ahead and do those for them since they're being so generous with me. Those topics include preparing for and receiving the 1500, installation of the ATC, uh, how and when to use wear offsets, how to calibrate tools, uh, business uh, purchasing decisions around purchasing a larger machine, and just showing that the machine can cut and make parts. Um, it says they're going to give me a tracking link that I'll put down in the uh, description of all my videos. Uh, content produced is owned by Alexander Huff, but Tormach is granted a worldwide non-exclusive, um, it doesn't say perpetual license, but perpetual license to use anything that I make that's, you know, around their video, or excuse me, around their equipment, their machine. So here is the first point that you guys may be interested in. Um, it says that I agree to contact Tormox tech support if I have a problem with the machine before I publicly address that problem on the machine. So for example, if, um, I don't know, I'm getting a bad surface finish on a part, like I can't just go blast the machine on social media before talking to them and trying to get a fix for it. Um, or if, I don't know, something breaks, like the coolant pump has weak pressure. I need to call their tech support and figure out why my coolant pump has weak pressure before, you know, publicly declaring that all Tormach suck or whatever. Um, I think that's a pretty safe and reasonable thing for them to ask me. I don't think that is um, overly meddling. Though, do take that into consideration when you're watching my content. Um, I will be completely open and honest with you guys. But a, or a, um, a clause like that in the contract will kind of contaminate the way that I might approach making videos. And in fact, because of clauses like this and the fact they're providing equipment for free, I have to uh, disclose in all of my videos that like this stuff doesn't count as a review. That's like the law in the United States. It goes on to say that if I don't live up to my end of the of the agreement, then I have to send the machine back to them or I can buy it at a market price. I am officially a brand ambassador, which includes I have to do record a customer story video that I think is going to go on their website. I need to be available to their marketing team. I need to provide industry feedback. Um about like like feedback on the specific machine itself like hey i think this machine would be better if they did this um or hey i think the industry really needs five axis machines at a lower budget um etc which is something i've been constantly telling them um i need to use their made with tormach hashtag on social media uh i get to find out about sales and promotions first um all right, here is another clause that may interest you guys. Uh, I cannot directly promote a competitor. So um, I don't think a company like Haas or Doosan is going to count. I can talk about them as much as I want because I don't see those as a direct competitor to Tormach. Same thing even with like Pocket NC or like Sureline. Like those are kind of different classes of machines than like the Tormachs. But I am probably not going to be talking as much about Sile, for example. It does also go on to say that if I'm making any content that directly compares Tormach to a competitor, uh, if it is found to be, and I'm going to quote this, inaccurate or unfair, Tormach may request removal of the content. So basically, if I make a video, like another Sile versus Tormach um, comparison, and I say, you know, the 1500MX only has one horsepower and the Sile has six. Like, they're allowed to say, hey, that's not right. Can you fix that? Um, I trust Tormach to be to be fair about this. Like, if I say, say something that is accurate that shows them in a poorer light than one of their competitors, they're not going to have that taken down just if I make a mistake in something that I say. Um, I'm not allowed to release Tormach business secrets or talk about... Um, products they still have in development that aren't released yet and i mean that's pretty much it after that there's just a couple more terms of you know like if we want to um terminate this contract we need to do it in writing um either me or tormach can do it at any time for any reason um etc while i will be open and honest about all tormach products going forwards 
don't consider them a review. I will have some bias, even if it is just like a subconsciously implicit thing. Tormach is helping me out. I want to help them out. I like them as a company. That was my biggest takeaway from going up there and doing the factory tour. I really like Tormach. And out of all of the companies I've seen recently, out of all the companies I've worked for, I've had something like four job offers since I went full-time machinist. Um, Tormach did not offer me a job, but theirs may have been the only one that I would have accepted had they offered it to me. I really liked their leadership. I really liked their culture. I I was a big fan of Tormach. I am a big fan of Tormach. So I know some of you guys may have kind of a bad taste in your mouth from other bombastic YouTubers who have gotten machines and changed their business model. But I want to reassure you guys, I will always be a machine shop first. I'll make videos about my machining of customer parts, and I'm not going to be going down the, the boom route. If I didn't think that I could effectively use the 1500 to make money, I would not take it from Tormach even if it was free. Having a bigger machine that can take bigger parts and run longer tools is actually going to make a big difference for this company, especially as I start to transition away from Zometry and start getting more local work or more offline work, more non-Zometry work. I fully intend to automate that machine to death because their automation integration with their robot is really good. I have not bought a robot yet, but that is totally in my plans. So here's another question to talk about. Is it fair that I get a machine for free when I'm competing against other job shops? Well, first of all, it's not illegal. It's not immoral. And so I don't care. It's feeding my family. And that's good enough for me. Secondly, this YouTube channel has been around for eight years. Now, granted, there was a couple years in there where I wasn't actively publishing videos. But I have spent a lot of time building this business, the YouTube business, in addition to my job shop business. Any machine shop out there, you are welcome to take time out of your day and build a YouTube channel. There's nothing preventing you. It's not unfair. Most shops don't spend the time building a YouTube channel because they're smart enough to know that they make more money machining than they do YouTubing. <laughs> Eight years later, this channel is starting to pay itself off. <laughs> However, if I had just worked at McDonald's for the same amount of time that I've spent working on this channel, I could have bought a really nice five-axis machine by now. Look at it another way. Let's say I had spent the last eight years spending time developing a new cam package, something that only I use in my internal company. That's just the easy button where I press go and it spits out finished G-code without any human interaction. That would be a huge competitive advantage to me. And nobody would see that as unfair. Like, oh no, you spent all that time developing software that you're going to use yourself. How dare you? You need to share that with the industry. No, nobody, nobody would complain about that. I've just spent time working on a YouTube channel and working on a social media presence. And now that has become an advantage for me. That does not bother me at all. All good companies should have some advantage like that in their industry. Look at a company like Kern. They started off as a job shop, but then when they couldn't find the right machine to make their parts, they just made their own machine. And guess what? I bet that job shop's doing really, really well right now because their machines have capabilities that nobody else does, or unless you shovel out three quarters of a million dollars for a Kern. So stop whining. Go make parts. Bye.